Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon. Welcome to latest edition of our Cold Classic documentary series. As you know, with our Cold Classic documentary series, we look at uh, TV series throughout the decades from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s that have left their mark on the TV industry and are still being watched uh, in the world today by all sorts of different uh, generations that uh, passed their time. In this month's cult classic series, we're looking at Starsky and Hutch, which ran from 1974 and 19, between 1979, which was a, a cult classic detective TV series, which is obviously has been made into movies and different incarnations, and which can be seen currently all over the world in more than 100 countries in various different uh, languages that has been dubbed uh, so many times. As you know, this week we're going through, uh, and these past few weeks throughout the month of May, we've been speaking to guest stars that have appeared on Starsky and Hutch to reminisce about their memories of uh, their time spent on the show, speaking to the main characters, uh, David Soule, who played Detective Hutchinson, and Paul Michael Glazer, who played uh, Dave Starsky, and other cast mem prominent cast members, such as Bernie Hamilton, who played Captain Doby, and Antonio Vargas, who played Hoggy Bear. For this week's episode, so we go to season three, episode three, which aired on October the 1st, 1977, all in cable TV all across the United States. It was named I Love You, Rosie Malone. And the guest star and the guest actress who was the title guest star in this show was Tracy Brooks Soup. And she played uh, the character Rosie Malone. And um, Tracy, first of all, if I can start off... Um, Thanks for being with us there this evening. And uh, I watched back the episode there today. And uh, in terms of the start of it, uh, you definitely were able to run anyway. I can take that. You did must have <laughs> did three laps, I'd say, around that sort of park. Or was that maybe two uh, minutes sort of runs that were sort of recycled again and again? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, Tracy, in terms of your opportunity of appearing on um, Starsky and Hutch back in 1997, and just looking at you there, you were sort of a young actress at the time. Was that one of your first uh, big breaks in terms of uh, show business in the United States? That sort it of guess what? Yes, I was actually, I started off in New York when I was quite young and I did a lot of theater. And, um, and I got an award for doing a play called 40 Carats from a bus and truck company. And we did it in Summerstock. And Cary Grant gave me the award for the most promising new actress when I was in my teens. And then I did a soap opera called Where the Heart Is for a while. And then when I came to California, this was my first you know, terrific television episode as a guest star. And they thought I was too young originally, but I told them differently. We had a great chemistry, Paul and I, so it was nice. Yeah, and you mentioned that, and I suppose uh, playing uh, the love interest of uh, Starsky in that sort of an episode, sort of such, and I suppose as a young actress, was that, uh, uh, was it sort of exciting or a bit daunting at the time in terms of um, that sort of show? But I suppose there was nothing sort of tongue in cheek about it anyway. It wasn't really over the top as such as well. There was no real sort of big sort of chemistry scenes either. Yeah, well, we shot the goodbye scene first. So I was totally intimidated and daunted because I had a big crush on him. I'd seen him in a play in New York and he was wonderful. And I had briefly met him with an actress named Blythe Danner. And when, when I auditioned for this and I got the part, the first day on the set was the goodbye scene and we had to kiss. So I was a bit mortified, but, I, but it was in, very exciting and wonderful for me at the time. And obviously a lead sort of role in terms of appearing in, in Starsky and Hutch. Yes. When you saw the character Rosie Malone, what sort of what sort of jumped out at you straight away? She was an, an intrusive character to begin with, sort of well secret, secret type of character, yes. well sort of reserved, sort of hidden, who was very sort of, dare I say, untrusting of people. Well, my father was running, I guess, drugs for the mob. And so when I fell in love with Starsky, I was not trusting. And then when I totally gave over to him and then found out later he was a cop, it just sort of eviscerated me. But I chose my father over him, which probably was a mistake. 
<laughs> and in terms of uh, Starsky and Hutch, and one thing noticing about your character is uh, I must have counted, you must have had seven or eight different uh, outfits or costumes within the sort of one show from running yes. gear to, to sort of other sort of gear to dress wear to. So was it an extensive production and did you have any sort of uh, output or input in terms of your character, in terms of clothing, in terms of uh, design or stuff like that? A lot of I brought a lot of my own wardrobe too, and and um, uh, with spelling they had obviously a wonderful wardrobe mistress. So, you know, we could choose, we could choose what we wanted. And actually, I've kept a lot of the clothes. So now my daughter wears them. I can't okay. wear them anymore, but she does wear them because it's all coming back now. The '70s is coming back in a big way. So. Oh. It's so the memorabilia for Starsky and Hutch, which will probably be worth uh, millions for dare I say, a collector is is going on is going to uh, on your sort of daughter out in secondary school every day, sort of in sort of gym and sort of stuff like that. Yes, exactly. So yeah. it was just it was we had a wonderful time, and um, it was just uh, I just I loved doing the show. It was very exciting for me. And Tracy, I suppose. Uh, the childhood joke innocence, uh, which we see from uh, David Soul and Paul Michael Glacier on set, uh, was that sort of something similar you experienced uh, offset when the camera stopped sort of rolling? Was there was there a free, fun-loving sort of atmosphere full of jokes, full of cracks? One thing spoke uh, to Jerry May Mansfield. She said the two boys were notorious uh, practical jokers. They like to play jokes and the sort of tricks uh, offset on the sort of young people that sort of came into the show. Did you think some something similar? Yes, they were very funny together. And this is the time when David's song was coming out, I guess. Don't give up on us, baby. Remember that song? So they used to yeah. back and forth when we were at lunch or in the stall. I mean, they were very, they were great together. They were always ribbing each other. And it was, it was really fun. And I suppose, Tracy, most of your interactions obviously were with Paul and you had a few scenes uh, with David as well. Uh, do you ever get time on set to speak to um, Antonio Vargas or uh, Bernie Hamilton or do your paths ever cross uh, in between sort of takes? Or um, Not that much because it was pretty much focused on our relationship. But later on, we did the Hollywood show together and they're just it was I, I did meet them better later. But, you know, it was it, you know, they're quick. These series, you know, you do a lot of work in one day and then it's done. So it was mostly we pretty much worked together. And I didn't really get a chance to hang out with them as such because they get rid and of me. Yeah. And I suppose this was a lead sort of cable TV show shown across all America. And I suppose it did air in October the 1st, 1977. When you obviously found out from directors and producers the date it was sort of airing, I suppose, was it a joyful one where you sort of giddy, sort of young giddy sort of adolescent girl waiting anticipation? Because obviously you play a prominent role uh, throughout the episode. You're there practically in nearly every sort of scene. Was it one that you sort of with family, love? ones maybe boyfriends at the time that you sort of sat down and sort of took it all in or had a big screening or where did you remember seeing it for the first time yes i did we had a lot of people around it was very exciting to um watch it was like the big romeo and juliet kind of love story so um and it was apparently i mean paul and i talked about it, it was one of the highest rated shows they had mm. of you know the the rosie malone so yeah it was, it was and uh, Tracy, being involved in Starsky and Hutch, obviously, season three, obviously, 1974. So that would have been around 1977 as sort of when the show, your show aired. And obviously, Starsky and Hutch was big by then. Did it open up further doors for you throughout the 80s and sort of other guest starring roles and sort of other sort of roles having Starsky and Hutch on your resume? Yes, it did. A lot of people saw it. So we still have a fan base from it now, like you. But yes, um, and I worked for Spelling. I did probably every show that Spelling produced at the time, Spelling Goldberg and then Spelling. And it opened up to a lot of doors. I had done a show uh, with Richard Dreyfus. Remember him? Are you too yes, young? Yes, <laughs> yes. Richard Dreyfus and Geraldine Fitzgerald, who played my mother. We did a, uh, 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 a show for PBS that Gardner McKay had written that was very well received that Tony Bill was one of the producers. And, and so it just, it did, it brought me into a whole other uh, arena and it was, it was wonderful. A lot of movie of the weeks um, and then film. So yeah, I was very lucky to have gotten that 
with that role. And yeah, yeah. dare I say, you and the character Rosie Malone, have you sort of similar sort of traits? Was she an easy sort of character to portray or are you very much different in terms of real life, in terms of personalities? No, I don't think I'm that different. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much the same. She was a better runner than I am. But uh, oh. yeah, and my father wasn't, you know, with the mob. Yeah, that, uh, that, that was a that was a big thing. Yeah. That was a big start of sticking point, I yeah. suppose. Uh, in terms, of I guess I'm character. more trusting. I'm more trusting than she was. But. And I suppose uh, in terms of the glamour and the sort of appeal that went back in the 19 sort of 70s as well, and obviously. Starsky and Hutch were surrounded by beautiful women all the sort of time. Was that something sort of that you sort of uh, took within nature that that was part of the role? As I said, there was nothing obscene or over the top about it. But uh, yeah, obviously the competition, I imagine, for those sort of roles was strife to begin with. So obviously uh, in terms of physical appearance, so obviously it helped going uh, some way as well. Well, thank you very much. Yes. Um, I guess, depending on what everyone's type was. But yes, I, there's a lot of competition. That's what I mean. I was very lucky. When you keep working, you know, you always think you're going to keep working and you don't realize how lucky you really are because there's so much competition. And um, it was an honor to do the show. And the writer was wonderful. Paul was great to work with. And you learn a lot. And um, I'm just so happy I did it and that people still remember it. Mm. And I suppose, uh, Tracy, in terms of your your uh, obviously your next sort of generation, your own sort of family members. Uh, if they see Starsky and Hutch on TV there today and they see your episode, uh, so how do they sort of have they seen your episode and what's their sort of memories in this family? Do you watch it back? Uh, does it all do you like to actually watch back uh, previous roles that you sort of play? Because some actresses and actors don't actually look like looking back on roles they've actually played in. Yeah, it's fun either. to look back because you realize how time has gone by. And so you look back and go, oh my God, that was me. I mean, it's just, it's, I was thinking someday there should be a film about actors that they don't know if their memory is really their life or it's a part they played, a little bit of dementia. But I, yes, I like, I like looking back and it's fun for my family or my daughter to okay. look back. So it's. And it's, I suppose uh, Tracy Brooks Swoop. Uh, if they put your character, Rosie Malone, uh, in a Starsky and Hutch encyclopedia dictionary as such, and they left two blank sentences underneath, what you would like those two sentences to read to describe your character? Um, boy. Um, a, a warm heart and a cold shell. <laughs> A warm heart and a cold shell, straight and strict to the point. And uh, Tracy Brooks, Swoop, have you ever been to Ireland yourself? And uh, if so, what are your memories? And if not, is it definitely something on the bucket list for you? Wait, if I I didn't hear the first part of the question. So I said, Tracy Brooks, Swoop, have you ever been to Ireland yourself? Oh, and, uh, yes. If not, okay, yes. So uh, what are your memories of uh, well, there, was, My husband and I at the time went to see my daughter in her play at Trinity College. So we were only there for two days. So I can't say that I saw enough of it, but I really want to go back. I have friends that just love it and they can't wait to go back and the pubs and everything. And I just, I can't wait to go back, but I didn't see enough of it except the hotel room. Okay. And Tracy Brooks Soup, uh, finally from me to you, uh, in terms of Starsky and Hutch, is there any sort of, from your time on says, is there any sort of particular story that's unique to you uh, in terms of uh, appearing as Starsky or maybe an interaction with Paul or David Offset or some sort of funny story that may still makes you laugh there to this day that obviously the TV viewing public wouldn't be aware of? Um, just that Paul was a wonderful teacher and he's just a great guy and, and really intelligent and, and beyond just an actor. I mean, he's a wonderful painter and artist. And so I don't know if it's a funny story, but just the fact that I learned a lot from working with him. Okay. Uh, on that note, Tracy Brooks Swoop, a uh, pleasure talking to you uh, there today. To relive your memories of appearing uh, on season three, episode three, I Love You, Rosie Malone, which aired on October 1977. You played the lead guest star role, uh, the character Rosie Malone. Uh, Tracy Brooks Swoop, wish you all the best in your future endeavours and thanks for taking the time to speak to us today.
And I love you. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you. much. Bye. Take care, Tracy. Bye. Bye.